All right. Hello, everybody, and happy Monday. It is my favorite, favorite day of the week because I get to see all of your beautiful faces. My name is Angie Harper, and I am out here in Queen Creek, Arizona, and it has been a busy, busy Monday. If you missed it, I did a call a few hours ago with Christy Vogt and Donna Mondorf. It was a call geared specifically toward estheticians and people in the beauty industry. We have the recording. I believe it's in, in Vitality Rocks already. Uh, yeah, okay. So make sure you add people to Vitality Rocks and tag them in that overview. I, I just watched it again. And you guys, I'm telling you, if you have anybody on the fence that you go to for beauty services, they have to listen to that call. It might just be what they need to kind of push them over and, and really make them realize what they're leaving on the table. Um, so I wanted to remind everybody of that. Also, um, today, a Mother's Day promo dropped. And that is if you purchase um, the uh, is it activated essentials, I forgot what it's called. It's collagen, Nerf 2, and the True Renew all together, whatever that's called. Somebody dropped that in the chat. Then you're going to receive a free hair serum. So those of you out there that haven't tried the hair serum yet, um, there are a lot of people that that love it. I actually, to be honest, got out of the habit of using it, and I kind of want to get back into the habit of using it because I know a lot of people do like it. It's you know great for hair growth. My father-in-law actually has a really good story when it comes to growing hair. Um, so anyway, it's a $67 value. I know it's not like super exciting for Mother's Day, but it is pretty a pretty generous offer, I feel. Um, one other thing I wanted to make sure everybody understands, I put this in my team chat earlier. We have a track called the Retain Track, and that means you're growing your subscription volume every month. So at the beginning of the month, they take what your subscription volume was, that's all of your customers and all of your consultants. What they order every single month is your subscription volume. If you beat that by 500 SV every single month, you get a track, okay? Now here's the kicker. It has to be subscription volumes. So like I had somebody the other day who was 47 SV away from hitting a track and she just did a drop ship. It can't be a drop ship, but you have to go to the subscription, edit it and click process now, okay? If you're not sure how to do that, be sure to reach out to somebody in your upline and they will help you understand how to do that. Okay, let's get on to our featured guest today. Is she on? She's on, right? Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. is. Okay, she's on. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm looking for the title of this call so I can properly introduce this girl. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a good one. It's been a while since we've had her on, so... Make sure if, if you have a team member that has not met this lady, she is our top, top leader, guys. Make sure you send them a text right now and say, get on the team call. If anything, just to meet her and listen to her, okay? Because she doesn't, she doesn't hop on our team call all the time. So this is a treat. And our topic today is five essential decisions for achieving success. And if there's anybody that has achieved success by working her little booty off, it is this girl. Now, for those of you that are new to the team, new to the call, um, Tara Wilson and I met when we were 16 and 17 years old in the back of a car after a high school football game. So to say we go way back is an understatement. And I always like to say that you know, she has been in this industry for a long time, like over 15 years, and right, 15. And I like to say, guys, she doesn't really have to be doing this. She doesn't have to be training. She doesn't have to train other teams. She could just lay by her pool with a margarita in the sun, you know, and her, what she's done for the last 17 years, what she's done continues to pay her over and over again. But that's not her, guys. It's in her heart. It's her passion to help people, to help people grow, to help people achieve what she has achieved. And, you know, you can see there's a sign behind her that I actually got her for her birthday last year, and it's called Working Works. And that's the best quote, I think, that I've ever heard because it is so true. She shows up. 
she works, she pours into her team, and we're just so thrilled to have her on the call tonight. So Tara Wilson, she's about 40 minutes from me right now in Paradise Valley, Arizona. Welcome to the call. I like your hat. I like your, <laughs> your frosty pink lipstick that you've been wearing since we were 16. <laughs> That is so true. <laughs> it used to be I wet know. and wild. I think she could afford more than wet and wild now. But maybe. No, I, I have good stuff, but I um, I have tried, like, I could do, like, a frosty lavender, but if I put red on, I look like I'm 75 years old. Like, I've tried colors. If I put anything dark to me, I'm just like, Ugh. Like, I have <laughs> a frosty beach babe that's never lived at the beach. <laughs> Nor would I want to. I'm more of a pool girl, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, thank you. And, you know, if I haven't met you, I will look forward to meeting you and I uh, see all you familiar faces. Thanks for taking the time. And and uh, like she said, my passion at this point in the game and, and at this point in my career is to be giving back because I do want everyone to have success that I have. You know, when I got started in March of 2007, um, my husband and I both had full-time jobs my little one right here, um, I'll put it closer. She just turned 18 a few days ago as a senior going off to college. And my son is uh, already graduated from college, trying to get into med school, 24. And then a couple of years after that, um, two years into this career, I had my third who in a couple a week or so will be um, 15, a freshman plays soccer. So um, why, why I did it, why I got into this is because I had a great job. People are like, well, why did you do this? You already had a six figure income and so did your husband. Like if you looked in on us, we weren't hurting financially. We weren't unhappy. We weren't complaining. We were not in debt. We were actually had zero credit card debt. We were 401ks. We were saving for our retirement. Um, we never lived above our means. We were very smart with our money. We were paying off our second mortgage. But my pain, and you got to, you know, everyone's pain is different. Everyone's need is different. But mine was, I had these two little humans and I knew that I wanted more. And it's like, gosh, I have to drop them off every morning and, you know, 730 and don't pick them up till five, you know, five, five thirty, um, exhausted after, you know, eight, working eight, nine hours. Um, then you have to go to the grocery store or go home and cook, clean bedtime, bath time, story time, chores, bills, laundry, laundry never ends. And I was exhausted. And I did this day after day after day. And actually I was featured in a book. I don't know. I've been in a few of them. And my chapter was Groundhog Day because I truly felt like I was living Groundhog Day, but there had to be more so that when family members brought this to me, I was just like everyone else. I did not just jump all in and go, whoa, network marketing, that sounds fantastic. I was like, Honey, I think it's one of those, I was ambushed at a birthday party. I'm like, I think it's one of those things. I don't want to do it. I was avoiding my brother's call for two weeks. Meanwhile, he went and enrolled 52 people or his first couple of weeks, including every sibling that we had, including my siblings, including my aunts and uncles on my side and everybody that said yes. And I was the very literal last family member standing. And finally I said, okay, just tell me when your meeting is and I'll go. But I told my sister who got to me, it wasn't my brother. I said, hey, Promise me this, if I am not interested, you will never contact me again. I had that icky feeling. Did anyone ever have that icky feeling when someone started prospecting them? Like that icky feeling like, oh, they want, to, they want me to sell. They're trying to sell me something and they want me to sell stuff. Ah, it's uncomfortable, right? Well, after 17 years, I've learned that um, there's a way to do it. There's predators and there's professionals. And, you know, so there, that's a whole nother talk. That's a great, uh, that's a great topic, predators versus professionals. And I know that Lindy has a great series coming for you guys in May about the four beliefs. I'm really excited about that belief in the industry, the product, um, yourself and the uh, company. And those are the four pillars of beliefs everyone has. I'm looking forward to that, Lindy. I'm very excited. And so along the way, I've learned that there are some major decisions because in 2007, despite working full time, no network marketing experience, I was a, an employee, had to, I had an employee mindset. I was like, I'll show up at eight, tell me what to do, tell me how to do it, and I'll go do it. And I did it well. I, I, did, I did really well in, in, my, in my past careers. Um, but this was new territory to me. I kind of liked having a boss. I kind of like not being in charge and being the captain, um, you know, and so it's, it's a whole, you know, other side. And so the first thing you have to do, and this is the first decision is the decision. You have to make a decision that you're going to become an entrepreneur. 
that you are going to become a business owner. You are not my employee, you're not Angie's employee, you're not Chrissy's employee. You are not your upline's employee. You are your 100% very own business owner for a legacy uh, that you can leave for your children. This is heritable. You can build a massive distribution um, you know, business under you that could pay you literally millions of dollars for the rest of your life. That's the mindset you have to have. Not, I'm going to try to get a few friends and family to buy my product. There's a, there's a difference in that. You understand? And so obviously my first company, um, I've only been in, in life managed for eight and a half years, but my first company was an antioxidant drink. And I only tell you guys this, because it's not even, it's not even in business anymore to tell you that the reason I said yes in 2007, despite having a full-time job and two small kids and a husband, I barely saw with literally no time. Like we had no time. I don't even know how I did. I still look back and go, how did they do it? And it was crazy. The first six and a half months before I was able to quit my job and replace my income eight months later, um, it was, it was chaotic. It was was hard it was stressful but I made a decision to turn off my television that's not one of the decisions but I did make a decision to turn off my television because I was wasting probably 10 to 15 hours a week and that's when I built my business people are like when did you build your business I'm like at the time that most people are just sitting there watching tv after dinner would you guys agree that a lot of people Netflix and chill and oh thank god thank god Netflix wasn't there I don't know what I would have done there was no Netflix you know we just had basic stuff like Grey's Anatomy and, you know, desperate housewives and all that. So I, uh, I knew that I had to like start thinking a different way. So I started listening, you know, I still my, one of my favorite things, my very first piece of personal development, if you're new and you have not started your mindset training of entrepreneurship, of launching a business in the network marketing industry, you may want to write a few of these down. Number first one I got, it's only an hour long. It's free on YouTube. It's Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N, if anyone wants to jump in the chat, how to build your network marketing business. And I listened to that on repeat over and over again in my Honda or my little Acura Integra. I had it in the deep CD player, whatever that was, the little round discs. And my kids would get in and be like, no, I'm not this guy again. And my husband would be like, how long is this video of training? And I was like, an hour. He's like, you've been listening to it for three weeks. And I'm like, I know because I, I'm going through this right now as I'm trying to talk to people, this stuff's happening to me and it makes me feel better. People are ignoring me. People are quitting on me. People are canceling on me. People are mocking me. People are being weird to me. And it makes me feel better to know that that's part of this gig. You understand that that, that, that rejection and ridicule and all that stuff is, is part of this. He's, he basically says, don't take that class. If you've heard that, you'll know. He says, don't take that class. Then, um, of course, uh, 12 years ago, I think it was 12, 14 years ago now, I read GoPro by Eric Worre. Um, still one of the greatest how-to skills-based network marketing book. Um, I read Your First Year in Network Marketing by Mark Yarnell. And I just started going to the library and the bookstore. I went to Barnes and Noble and started buying anything that was how to build a network marketing business. Anything with network marketing in the title, I bought it. And you guys can see, um, these are all the books I've read. And none of those are like Danielle Steele or James Patterson. Those are in another room. Those are all either having to do with health entrepreneurship, leadership, um, mindset, et cetera. So that, and then the books I haven't read are sitting actually on my desk. And then I have audibles full. So I've probably read about four or 500 books over the last 17 years, which has helped me a lot. So that's the first thing. So when I say starting a business, I knew there would be sacrifice. I knew there would be inventory. I got all the brochures. I spent hundreds of dollars on brochures because we didn't have you know, whatever the websites and stuff. I paid for the websites. We had to pay for websites back then. I bought the DVDs. I bought inventory for my product because I, it was a juice. I had to get people to taste it because if they're going to buy it unless they tasted it. Right. Um, I had to learn a conversation. I had to get uncomfortable. I had to go buy a whiteboard because we didn't have the luxury of zoom. Right. So if you, um, if you're wanting to start a business and share in collagen and you don't have an extra 10 pack of collagen guys, you're not in business. And I, I heard this early on. It said, would you ever like, I don't know, this is just an easy one to say. Would you ever start a liquor store and then just be like, uh, oh, no, we only serve wine. We're a liquor store. Um, we're hoping to maybe someday get some vodka and the beer. But no, right now, all you can buy is wine. Like some of you have never even tried all of our products. You can't even talk about all our products. A lot of you guys are, you know, it's not a lot of you guys. But some guys are still talking about Nerf 2 maybe, or maybe just a Tri-Synergizer or the 
the collagen, a lot of people don't even know we have an incredible hair serum. And I need to get more consistent too, Angie, because I have a good friend who's 56 and she thinks it's the big, like the best thing that she's ever used in her life. She swears by, in fact, we go to the same hairdresser because I referred her to it, her, and she, even my hairdresser's like, your friend's hair has grown a lot. If it's really that product, you, you should be, that's a gold mine. Like she, she's 56 years old, got rid of her widow's peak and her hair has probably doubled in volume. She uses it every single day. God, I wish I had that, uh, you know, discipline, but she has no small kids. You know, she's retired at home. So like bless her heart. But I, I, she's had, and another good friend of mine who lives in the Bay area, he's 54 and he was, um, really started to go bald and it has doubled the volume of his hair. He also buys it every single month. So we do have it. But my point is, is when you're launching a business, you know, you got to think like a business owner. Would you ever, would you ever, um, start selling products in a store that you didn't know about. You'd research them. You'd research their ingredients, like the research and development. What are they doing? What's the problem? So when someone walks into your store, imagine if you have a nutrition store and all of the life vantage products that are available right now on your website were on the shelves. Could you intelligently talk about them? Could you answer questions about them? Could you, could you, you know, like identify some of the frequently asked questions? Could you tell them what they're going to expect? That's what you need to do when you launch a life vantage business, right? So when I mean starting a business, I mean like really telling you, like, you know, going all in. Like I'm sitting here drinking the daily world. So I usually drink it in the morning, but I forgot my allergies and my daughter's allergies are out of control right now. So I'm drinking it every single day. But I can tell someone about that. I can tell them all five ingredients, what they're gonna do, what they're gonna expect, the epicor, the eight human clinical studies, like. I can tell them what this is going to do for them because I experience it, I've researched it, and I've become an expert on it. So when I say starting a business, I really mean learning the products, learning the compensation plan, and being able to talk about your business and your products to anyone, anywhere, anytime on the spot and feel comfortable about it. Okay. Now it doesn't happen all at once. It was a slow build for me. I was, I did not come out of the gates with confidence. I did not make money for until my fourth month. I, I mean, I made money, but I didn't get in profit mode where I was actually making more money than I was losing until my fourth month. But then my six and a half months in the business, I quit my job by the eighth month. I replaced my six figure income and my 15th month, I tripled it. So I think that sometimes like we dabble now I can, I know that Angie didn't dabble. Kristen Bailey didn't dabble. Kristen, how 172 people, her first 120 days. Belkis didn't dabble. You know, Belkis went double diamond, right? Diamond, diamond, first month, second month, something like that. And a lot of you guys didn't dabble. And those are the people that are having success. And that's what I mean by starting a business and having the decision to launch your business, meaning go all out. Just keep talking to people, sharing the tools, and you don't have to know it all before you do it, but just commit to learning it on the way. Even if it's a half an hour a day, an hour a day, investing in your business will make you more valuable to your team that you're going to build, right? We're all going to build a big, huge, global, multi-million dollar team, right? Well, you got to be, uh, you got to know what you're doing to build that team. And then also be valuable to your customers. And when a new teammate is nervous and they need to put you on the phone with a prospect that you can have that conversation. Okay. And I think that's probably the most important decision of all. And a lot of people can't, don't even get to the other four because they don't even do the first. Do you understand? So launching your business, making like you are building a business. When people ask you what you do, don't say I work at Wally World, whatever. I just watched this movie with my kids the other day. Don't say I work at an ABC company. Don't say I work as a realtor. I have a global wellness business. But Tara, I make $100,000 a year in my job and only $10 a month in this. Do you want to build that brand or do you want to build this one? Do you understand? I was only making $500 a month in my juice business and I was making $12,000 a month in my mortgage. But people asked me what I did. I said, I am building a global wellness business. And also right now to pay the bills, I'm selling mortgages. How great of a story is that? You know what I mean? And people are going to be like, nobody cares about the mortgage because probably they're not in, but how are they going to be like, what's your wellness business? And now you can ha start having a conversation. So that's the first decision. Number two, the second is the decision to learn the skills, right? The seven skills of network marketing. I don't know what they all are. Launching a business, prospecting, following up. I don't know. They're in They're in GoPro. You can actually do a quick Google search. Eric Worre, seven uh, network marketing skills. Um, 
but learning the skills, presenting, following up, um, building a team, getting people started, attending events. There are skills that you need that you didn't need in your any other job, unless you were in sales, then you might have already been good at presenting. So that might be something that I carried over that because I was in wholesale mortgage. I actually carried over um, presenting in, in, in my career because I had to present my mortgage products to people to get them to buy the bank's loan. I didn't work for, I didn't sell the loans to the people. I worked for the bank who sold the loans to people. So I was, my, my customer was a mortgage broker, um, but was, you know, selling you the loan to buy a house. So <laughs> learning the skills and I learned them by reading. I learned them by doing, I learned them by, um, others. You know, we had, you know, trainings. I, I never missed a training here. I am 17 plus years in the profession and I have never, not once ever missed a, an event, a big event, not once ever, not I've, I've dragged a two month old by myself from California to Florida, um, by myself. And I actually had to ask a stranger on the airplane to hold her. Cause I had to go to the bathroom. I didn't, didn't think about that before. Um, and so I've missed funerals. I missed my ex-father-in-law's funeral, which was really hurtful to my ex-husband. Um, I missed a good friend. My, my husband missed a good friend's wedding. We weren't in the wedding. If I was, I would, I, I don't know. I missed my niece's wedding when I went pro 10 and I was being celebrated. I missed my niece's wedding. And that kind of bothered me. I really wanted to go because my sister's not in the picture. Um, but I've made sacrifices. Now I have Missed some of my kids' sports. Um, probably wouldn't miss like a national championship. You know what I mean? Like my daughter is in softball right now. If they go state and there was a life advantage event, I would probably go to my daughter's state event but or national championship or something. But I have never been faced with that, you know, big of a decision yet. I've missed a couple games here and there. And, um, you know, learning the skills along the way is is doing it is is reading about it is you know there the skills are the same for since 19 1890 since avon you have products you got to get them in front of people you got to give them the information you got to ask questions and you got to get them to make a decision whether they want to buy from you right learning how to do a zoom learning how to do a facebook live learning how to post on instagram those are little things you can pick up on the way and those will be helpful and they'll reinforce you. And the more skills you have, the more you're broadcasting your information about your products and about your business, um, the more opportunities you're going to have for leads coming in. But so the, some of the simple skills are just following up, following up. Like most people don't follow up. 90% of people never follow up. You want to be in the top 10% of network marketing, follow up once. That's it. And then I think it's to be in the top 1%, you follow up five or more times or something. It's not hard. The things that separate the top leaders from the people that aren't successful are little simple things that anyone can do and they're just not doing them. And one of them is, is following up. Obviously, you got to talk to people. The more people you talk to, the more people you'll have that are potentially interested because it's not 100%. We are not batting 100. Nobody's batting 100. Not even Kristen Bailey, right? You're not even batting 100, are you? I Close, maybe like 99. But um, in the more people you talk to, it is a numbers game. I don't think people are, it's not a numbers game. 100% is a numbers game. So learn the skills. And you know what? There's a lot. And if you read even one network marketing book, you're going to have all those skills. So again, they're all going to say the same thing with a different story and a different timeline and different tools and technologies, but they all say the same thing. Number three is seeking mentorship. Now a mentor is a great idea because we have gone out, we have done the work, we have probably come across every possible scenario. In fact, when I get a new scenario, I'm like, gosh, that's a good one. I got to write that down. In 17 years, I haven't heard that question. I mean, it's pretty rare though now for me after this long to actually get a, a rare, like a, a one-off question, like so out there that, man, I don't think anyone would like, if you sat there brainstorming for three weeks, you couldn't come up with it, but it does. But the mentors will basically say, hey, you can do it that way. When people are like, can I do this? And I know that I've either done that in the past or I know people have done that and it didn't work. I can say, well, you can do this, but here's the bottom line. You know, unless you do this, like booth events. Booth events can be either great 
or a huge waste of money. Now, some of y'all, like the Florida team, you guys do really good. I know Angie, you've done great. A lot of you have done great. I don't want to start saying names. I'll forget them. But booth events are only great if you collect names and actually follow up. There's very few people that will buy on the spot, um, but they can be networking groups, a same thing. You could go to networking groups all day long, but if you don't go have your one-on-ones and if you don't make quality conversations and you don't really start like being part of the team and saying, oh, you need a plumber? Well, I got this guy and really using the networking groups. Like, I don't think there's a better networker on this call than Angie Harper. I swear that girl's got a solution for every problem you got. She probably knows every plumber, electrician, roofer in, in Queen Creek, and she's only lived there for a few years. <laughs> like, but that's what that what that's what the great thing about networking groups are. And uh, where's Sherry? I saw you start, Sherry. Sherry Kushenhauer. Sherry is uh, actually here. Um, gosh, 2009. I went to a networking group and I met a guy who came to my house with his arms crossed, never sat. I was just doing a presentation in my living room in Danville. He sat, he didn't even, he stood in the back about 20 minutes into my 30 minute presentation. He goes, I got to go walk out. And I was like, Ooh, that didn't really go well. And, and then he texted me the next day. He said, your presentation was interesting. My daughter's a nutritionist. I want you to connect with her. I went, I went and met with her. She signed up and then she signed up a gal that she knew that worked for a chiropractor across the street that was starting at her own business called Fit Mind and Body, Brandy Geiger. And she signed up. And then um, Sherry was a client, I believe, of Brandy's or a good friend of Brandy's. And Sherry's here in 2024, 15 years after that networking event. So that networking event that I did in 2009 is still part of my team and a very beautiful, happy part of my team. So, um, and Brandy, it doesn't really show up a lot, but she still is enrolled customers every single month, actually. She's still very involved that way. So it just never know. I mean, and now what if you met 10 Sherry's, you know, or 20 Sherry's and, and there are more people I probably, uh, Mara, Mara Solomon and I met at, in, um, in the Hilton um, in Honolulu, sitting by a pool, and we just started talking. And my last company wasn't for her, so we met. Gosh, what was like twelve years ago? Yeah, twelve years ago. And so we were just kept in touch for two and a half years. And when I started Life Vantage, we were Facebook friends. Then she reached out and said, "You know, my timing is right." And eight and a half years ago, she joined me, and she's been here for eight and a half years because a conversation I had while our kids were swimming together at a pool. So you never know. You know, you just, again, having those conversations, being a good person, being generally interested in people, um, you know, that is, you know, one of the best skills, but I don't know what I got for seek mentorship. So all of these things, you know, that we've gone through, we don't want you to have to, Eric Worre puts it this way, it says you could literally compress five to eight to 10 years of time. If you just go do exactly what we did to have success. And don't go trying things on your own and don't go, you know, getting these crazy ideas, follow people who are having success. And the cool thing about network marketing is, is we all have a vested interest in you. Any one of you at any time could reach up to me and know that I will 100% respond. I think every one of you has reached up to me at some point, most of you, and I've responded. I will, and I will keep responding because I would love nothing more than to help you, than to connect with you, to, to hear your story, to mentor you, to answer questions, anything that I can do to help. And I know all of the leaders in between, whoever you are and me, feel the same way. I know that they all do, I because I, I talk to them all the time. And our, we have all a vested you know, interest in your success because we wanna help bless more lives, right? With the product and the company. Number four is the decision. So you can, you know, learn all the skills. You could start your business. You can buy your pack. You can be on the calls, but nothing happens, nothing until you start taking action. You have got to get out there and do the hardest part, which is taking action. Isn't that the hardest part? Oh gosh. Now I got to talk to people. What am I going to say? How are they going to feel? Am I going to stumble over my words? Are they going to reject me? Are they going to ridicule me? Are they going to make fun of me? Are they going to just ignore me? Am I going to lose a friend? I'll tell you, I've never lost a friend. And if you lose a friend over a network market, starting a business that's helping people with their, with their health, then there weren't your friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's the weirdest thing you know like i don't lose friends over this um but taking action and making the decision to persist because 
why Carrie Dickey has the, she has the whole thing, but she read a book. I, I got to read that book, but you're going to be terrible until you don't suck so bad. And then you're not going to suck so bad. Then you'll be okay. And then you're going to be okay. Then you'll be pretty good. Then you're going to go from pretty good to good. Then you're going to go good to really good. Then you're going to go really good to great. Then you're going to go great to legendary, but you don't go and join and become legendary your first day. What, how can you get there quicker? The most action. When you put yourselves into the most situations, talking to the most people, getting all the questions out, all the frequently fun asked questions, and some of those are fun, getting yourself into situations with people that are potentially gonna buy your products or become your business partners, which is the only two things that make you money, both for you and your team, then you won't, that. the more you do that, the person that gets to, a hundred presentations or 500 presentations or a thousand presentations the quickest is going to be like yours. So if you've done 10 presentations and I mean just conversations and someone's done a hundred, they're probably 10 times ahead of you. Do you understand that? So putting yourself in those situations and that's what I did well. And by the way, that's another talk show, but I didn't know all my friends were already, uh, I mean, all my family was already in my first company. All my friends said no, including Angie. <laughs> She said yes. And then Garrett said no long story anyway. Um, but then um, the three people that I earned my first half a million in two years in network marketing, my very first company were three strangers. So I met one of them on Craigslist. One of them was my husband's friend who played baseball with him in high school that, or college that went on to play pro, one of the pros that he played with. And then a mortgage broker that I worked with, his wife. So three people that I didn't know existed in the world, didn't know their names, didn't know their, you know, that, that was the, the bulk of my success in my first company. And then once I did it, I started my business. I launched my business. I learned the conversation. I learned the compensation about it. I learned about the product. I got a whiteboard and I started going out and sharing that and teaching others. And that is the fifth decision is well, after you take action, after you get the mentors going, you got your business launched, you're learning the skills, you're taking action, the next thing to really go to success, you cannot do this by yourself, right, Kristen? You got to pro five by yourself, but to go to pro seven, you had to teach others. And making the decision that, you know what, you oh, do we know this is the greatest thing since sliced bread? Uh, network marketing is so great. For someone who's into wellness and into, you know, personal, feeling good, looking good, wanting to live a long, healthy life, and make money and not have a boss or, you know, not have to even leave their house and make money. This is the best profession in history with zero limits to how much you can make. No glass ceiling, you know, no one stopping you. You can pass your upline. They can help you do it. And there's nothing more. And, and until you start teaching others and getting that duplication, but not everyone's going to do it. But when you find those people, I think back to, you know, back there in 2007 at my third or, you know, my second month, I found one, my third month, I found one. And I think it was like, so, so March, July, my fourth month, I found my four, my third. And then I, um, I think my fifth month, I found like my fourth, I poured everything into those people to teach them the conversation. I went to their homes. One of them who was actually lives two miles from me now is, and, uh, um, Scott's still here we used to live 90 minutes from each other in the Bay area. I lived in Danville and she lived in foster city on a good day. It was 50 minutes, but most of the days it was traffic. So it was 90 minutes. And I went over her house twice a week for months, toting my, you know, my DVD and my notes and my whiteboard after I learned the conversation. And then I remember the day that she said, we're good. I'll do the meeting. And that freed me up to do other nights. Cause I had kids at home. I didn't only, I only did this like two nights a week and maybe a little bit on the weekend. And then I got a team down in um, Palm Springs and I would fly down to see those baby boomers and I would, they'd fill the living rooms and I would do the thing. And again, teach them the conversation then they started doing. And then I would fly up to Centralia, Washington, this 12,000 person town that this baseball, this famous Diamondback lived in. And I did the conversation and I went up there for months and months and months and months, rented a car, drove in the rain, through Portland. It was terrible. And, but I did it and became good friends with them. It was a guy who owned 12 subways. And he said, I own 12 subways, which I paid more than two and a half million dollars for. And you earn more than me. And that's why he said, yes. Right. And I was only making not only, but I was only making like 35,000 a month in my peak in that company. So, um, 
you know, oh, Palm Springs. Yeah. Where do you want to go? And then I got a little team in Phoenix and I would fly to Phoenix. So I was in A-list on Southwest for a few years. Right. And then thank God I got a girl that was local to me in Danville and I was at her house three, four times a week. And that's why I quit my job because I wanted to be able to do my business without the guilt of being away from my children more. So I picked them up earlier. I spent four or five hours with them. Then I would go off a few nights a week or one night I flew down to LA. I would fly in the lady. I would text her because she was like three miles from the LA export. I would go to the, uh, literally I'd walk to the corner. She'd pick me up. We'd bid her house and, uh, 10 minutes later. We'd have a meeting. And if I didn't leave that night, I would usually leave first thing in the morning. I wasn't even there 24 hours. And I went there a lot because it was easy. It was inexpensive. And she was putting people in front of me. So, and then, you know, once they start teaching other people, that's when you have the ability to go start recruiting more and teaching them. And that's how, where I am today, because I kept teaching people. So launching, you're starting your business, learning the skills, seeking mentorship, taking massive action and teaching others. And I believe that if you do this over and over again, and we're all going to be on our timelines, we're all going to have different skill sets. And by the way, I was not this confident. Angie knows that uh, 17 years ago, I used to break out in hives. I used to bumble over my words. I cried a few times when I would drive and nobody would show up. I was frustrated. I wanted to quit. So I wanted to quit network marketing like a hundred times, by the way, this hasn't been like woo, smooth sailing. But like she said, like, you know, we always tell people you will be highly underpaid for a while and you'll feel like you're doing so much work. And then one day you'll be overpaid and you won't feel like you're working that much. I'm kind of at that state. But if you knew all the years in between, you know, I'm, I'm at almost a million miler on Delta. I've already got a couple hundred thousand miles on American. I was an A-list member for Southwest. Like I've got so I probably have so many miles that I have flown to get to where I am. Um, and I, like she said, I just have never stopped doing it. Now I don't do my business all day, but I do it every day. So if there's any area that you're struggling in, like I really hope you wrote those down. Um, I hope you like really think on them. Where do you need to improve? Where do you need to improve? And that's where we can help you. So if you guys need anything from me or any Christy or Angie or Jane or Kristen or Sherry or Lindy or Donna or Suzanne, all these beautiful faces, Belkis, I wish I could see all your faces. Uh, hey, Senya, um, everybody, just let us know. Hey, Trish, I didn't forget you, beautiful. But um, thank you so much for being here and again, my number is always open. My 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 inbox is always open. I look forward. Senya and I meet every Monday, um, pretty much almost every single Monday, just to talk. She loves to share her ideas with me. Talk about someone that's in great action. Watch that one. And uh, okay, South Florida, we keep talking about it. I got to come out there. So and then Brentwood I, or wherever you guys need me, I would love to come out there and see your faces. But anyway, I know I know we don't like to keep these too much longer. So thank you guys, and uh, I hope to hear from you. And um, thank you all. I love you. And this Zoom is officially a wrap. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful Thanks, Tara. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Don't forget to use your last 10% 10, 10 off code for consultants. You have until tomorrow. Okay, let's get some consultants on this team. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye.